Another thing we'd do then it would be have GoZ installed with ZBrush and Houdini is to go ahead and use arbitrary meshes from ZBrush or Houdini, doesn't really matter, and use those as vector displacement meshes. Now, if you haven't learned about vector displacement meshes, go to my YouTube channel here and click on the ZBrush 4R8 What's New and check out how to do vector displacement within ZBrush. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and use Houdini to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So the first thing I'm going to do, hit the comma key to bring up our light box here, and let's just grab a mesh. Uh, go to your project tab here and just double click the demo female head, for example. And we're we'll going to start with this one. So we'll go ahead down here to subtool. We can go ahead and remove the eyes and the teeth. So let's go ahead and delete that subtool. And with a female head, she has a mouth bag inside. So if I go hold down Control Shift and select Lasso, you're going to see uh, she has a mouth bag that goes in here. So let's go ahead, hit W to bring up the gizmo. Hold down Control and just drag on our object to go ahead and mask out the bottom of the jaw. Control Tap to invert that mask. And then we'll hold down Control, go into Mask Lasso, and we'll just mask out all of this here. Then we'll Control Tap on her to kind of blur that out. Hold down Alt and move that pivot down. Now let's kind of open her mouth a little bit so we can kind of see that she has a mouth bag. And if you want to, you can go ahead and even some of this geometry out. You can actually control tap to invert that and kind of just even that out. So now we can see she has undercuts in there from her mouth bag that we can go ahead and transfer to a vector displacement map. Now we'll go ahead and send this over to Houdini using the Go Z functionality we talked about before. So we'll just hit Go Z here and then go back to Houdini. That'll go ahead and bring our plane, our head in. And now we need to apply this head to a vector displacement plane. In order to do that, I need to go ahead and import that digital asset. So I'm gonna to go to File, Import, Houdini Digital Asset. And of course, the download for this thing will be in the description of this video. So here's our vector displacement plane.hda. Let's go ahead and double click that and we'll just hit install. Now that that's installed, let's drill down into this here. So I'm gonna to go to the GoZ female head, double click on that. And then inside of here, I'm going to hit tab and start typing out vector. So VEC, there's our create vector displacement plane node. Let's go ahead and put that in there. And we'll go ahead and connect these. In order to see what it's doing, let's go ahead and turn on this little blue spot right here on this node. And that'll go ahead and apply our head as a vector displacement. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is see what UV method gets you the best results. Flatten seems to be doing a pretty good job here. If we go here to pelt, you're going to see uh, it doesn't do a too bad of a job. And if we go over here to project and we give us another result, we can go down here to original. And that one doesn't seem to be working at all. So I'm going to go here to flatten since that one seems to be working fine. And now we can start making minor adjustments. While we're making adjustments, let's go ahead and change our resolution. So we can actually go here to the grid resolution. We'll drop that down to like 256 just to make it run a little bit faster while we work. And let's start making some modifications. So the first thing we can do is go up here. If you want to translate the UV, you can. Everything looks like it's working fine. So I'm just going to go skip right down to rotate UV. If you want to rotate this UV, if you middle mouse click on here and you want to rotate, you can click, you can just drag left and right. If you want to do it in larger increments, go up here to the ones. And now when you middle mouse drag, you can see it makes larger changes as you go. Now you're going to see sometimes when you bring these in, they'll be really twisted. You just got to go up here to the UV and just kind of untwist those UVs here. So again, just go up here to one and just kind of keep dragging until it kind of untwists itself. And don't worry too much about the resolution on the inside here because we're working at a fairly low resolution. We'll pump this back up before we head out. You can also click on the scale UV here if you want to kind of change uh, the scale of these UVs. Of course, the scale of the UVs seems like it's working okay now, but you can just kind of dial that in and see if changing that at all is going to help you out. Clip depth is an interesting one. So we're going to go to clip depth. Let's go down to 0.01. You see as I drag to the right, it kind of sinks the head in more. And as I drag to the left, it'll pull the head out from that plane. So we'll go ahead and just drag to the right here, and we'll sink that in a little bit. If you need to, go up here to the rotate UV, even that back out. And let's talk about some of these other options here. So you're going to see we have our grid resolution we've already talked about, the UV blur amount, and the UV the border blur amount and the border blur distance. I'll take this border blur distance and I'll just kind of just start dragging this to the left and the right here. And I think 0.1 is a pretty good value. If you go up here to the border blur amount, you're going to see as I drag to the right, it's going to kind of ease that transition away from my mesh. That seems like it's fine. Everything's looking pretty good, so you can go ahead and play with these numbers as much as you want to. But if we're happy with what we see, let's go back up to our grid resolution. And you can go back up to 512 if you want to, or you can overcrank it to say, let's 10, say 1024. And it looks like we have a little bit of striations on here. So I'm going to go to the UV blur amount. I'm just going to drag that to the left a bit. And we'll say negative 40. If we want to go ahead and send this back over to ZBrush while we're in our GoZ female head, we'll go ahead and hit tab. And again, just like we went over in the previous video, hit start typing in go, grab that GoZ export, throw it at the bottom. Attach this node into this one, the vector displacement node into the ZBrush export. You can rename this if you want to by double clicking, but we'll just get and send it back into ZBrush here. 
So now we have our vector displacement plane. In order to create a brush or to append this to another existing brush, let's hit B, C, and we'll go to our chisel 3D brush that already has vector displacements in it. You're gonna see as I click on these, we have the little 3D alpha in here. So let's go to our brush menu. If you don't have it docked, just go to your brush menu and just drag that over here. And then you can go to brush from mesh. That'll throw your mesh over here in the end. And you're gonna see as we switch to it, it's got the little 3D alpha here. So with that selected, you can just pull out and now we're pulling out a vector displacement of this head. You're gonna see when we use this, it's got the undercuts of the mouth and the eyes and everything that you would expect from a vector displacement.